How did we go from this to this? Hello everybody, and today I'm going to take you through the history of the modern gas mask. We're not going to look at absolutely everything, because that would be impossible, but we're going to start with World War I masks and work our way up to modern respirators, so you can see how things have changed over that time. So what we have here is a reproduction of a pH gas hood, and these were basically masks that were used in World War I before the common gas masks we know today were invented. What you would do with one of these is it's made of a flannel-like substance, it would be soaked in a neutralising chemical to stop chlorine gas, and then the wearer would wear it. Now the idea would be that you would tuck the mask itself, the sort of flannel type material, into your clothing. When you breathe in, you breathe through the actual flannel that's been coated in a neutralising chemical, and then you exhale through this bit. <sighs> However, as simple as something like a pH gas hood is, it has problems. You wouldn't want the flannel covered in some sort of acidic substance to neutralise alkali gases really touching your skin. And, of course, the other problem with it being they expire quite quickly. So this is where modern gas mask, as we know it, started to come into existence. You basically get a normal mask, which you can inhale and exhale through valves, and you have a filter attached to it that can neutralise various gases and last longer. Here we have a British Mark V respirator from World War II, but this is a very similar design, just improved from what the masks were from World War I. You have the mask with its valves connected to a pipe, which connects to a large filter here to filter out the gases. The satchel could be worn on straps or on the belt to help reduce weight of the filter, and there is a sort of a hole at the bottom of the bag, and that lets you breathe through the filter while it's still in the bag, so you don't have to take it out of the bag to use it. Among other nations, the Germans from World War II were well ahead of their time when it came to designing gas masks. You can see from this German mask that it actually takes removable filters which screw on here which means you can easily swap a filter out in the field without lots of maintenance and messing about with the mask. Now what we have here is a British light anti-gas respirator from the end of the Second World War, and this is where Britain as well decided the Germans had the right idea. They put 60mm filter ports on their masks, but it's the exact same principle. You have a screw-on filter that's rather small, so you can have it on the mask itself and change it as needed. Now, during this period, the Americans decided to do the opposite to everyone else. This is sort of going into the middle of the Cold War, early Cold War. They decided that they wanted masks with light, sort of cheek filters in them. Now, this turned out to be a really stupid idea, but it sort of gained some popularity. The mask on the left is the Czechoslovakian M10M, and inside it, it has cheek filters on either side. However, these are really difficult to get in and out, and you can't change them in the field. You'd have to take the mask off to change the filter, and then you'd die of the poison gas. So, very poor design. On the right, we have the American XM28, which is one of the few American masks I've actually been able to get my hands on in the UK. And this is like a lightweight riot mask. They also use this with the tunnel rats in Vietnam. The idea is it's just designed to stop CS gas and things like that, and not actual full-on chemical attacks. For this, a cheek filter mask is absolutely fine. As the Cold War got near its end, we saw what was basically the pinnacle of mask design for the period. You have the British S10 on the left made by Avon Rubber. Very good vision range. It has a drinking tube in it. Very good voice emitter. All in all, a very good mask. On the right, you have a Polish OM14, and this is basically a very good idea how they've done this. While it's much cheaper to produce and much less comfortable than S10, it has the advantage it can either take a 40mm filter on the bottom, or you can attach it to a big canister via a hose. It's modular. As time went on, Russia began to copy Western masks more and more, and what we have here is the PMK on the right, and this is basically them trying to make a mask similar to the US M40 or the British S10 or any of the other good modern NATO modular masks. I'm not a massive fan of it myself because I find the rubber's too soft to make a good face seal. And here we have a Scott GSR, which is basically the modern type of gas mask that everybody's using. The GSR and the Avon M50 are the world's most popular gas masks now, and I'm not a massive fan of this mask, but I'll go over the features to show you how it's sort of become such a wildly accepted mask design. It has a good voice diaphragm and a drinking tube, so you can drink with the mask on using a special bottle even if there's poison gas around and you also have a sort of grill on the front this is the voice emitter it means that when you talk you don't have to shout as loudly your voice won't be as muffled so others can hear you 
you have a panoramic vision lens or a big visor and this basically means that you can see far better than if you had two smaller eye holes in the mask. I find this still really varies on the mask. There are some masks with the circular eye pieces where you can see better than these but this is a sort of common accepted design now. The mask also has dual filters so you can swap one over and continue to breathe through the other one and it also is meant to make breathing easier. However, this mask uses proprietary filters that only go on this mask, which I don't like. I'd rather they use standard 40mm filters like everybody else. The advantage of this design is, when you take one filter off, it locks the air hole, so you can't breathe poison gas. Well, I hope you found this informative from how we went from basically flannel hoods soaked in chemicals to modern masks with drinking tube, voice emitters, special filters and big vision range sort of panoramic views. If you like these sort of videos, subscribe for more, and please support me on Patreon, it would really help me out. Thank you.